Disclaimer, due to the uh, trouble with this game that you are about to hear me talk about, I took it the liberty upon myself of having really not much of a choice if I was going to willingly get decent footage for this game without looking like a complete mess, I had no choice but to use trainers. My Xbox here is fully soft modded and supports this. I apologize in advance for anyone who may be irked by this, but trust me, if you've played this game, you probably understand. If you haven't, well, well, just watch and uh, I hope you enjoy the review. Also apologies, this meant to come out way sooner back in October, but I was unable to procure footage because emulation did not work for me with this game, and I had to wait until after I got my Retro Team 5X Pro. Enjoy! Another review for the month of October? Another survival horror hidden gem? Sadly, no. This game is anything but that. I put this game off long enough after getting it for myself as a Christmas gift in 2018. I started it, stopped at the first save point, and put it down until recently. And by recently, I mean October of 2020, but oh well, things happen. I don't know how I did it, but I survived Dino Crisis 3. Developed and published by Capcom, this game was released on June 26, 2003 for Japan, September 16, 2003 for North America, and November 7, 2003 for Europe, exclusively for the Xbox. This game went in development around mid-2000, months before Dino Crisis 2 was released. The game would have been more in line with the previous two games, but nope! Instead, we get... well, you'll see. Let's just say that by the end, someone needed to pay, and I can say without a doubt, this is one of the worst survival horror games I've ever played. Why is that? Well, let's find out. <sighs> the game's story takes place in 2548. 300 years ago, Earth loses contact with colony ship Ozymandias. Apologies for mispronunciation. But the ship reemerges near Jupiter and a team called SOAR, Special Operations and Reconnaissance, is sent aboard a probe ship, in a probe ship, Safer, to investigate. They board, but it's not perfect. The Safer sends out a shuttle to investigate the Ozymandias, but the Ozymandias activates its weapons and destroys the shuttle while only four people survive. Patrick Tyler, Sonia Hart, Commander Jacob Branshaw, and McCoy. Though, not long after they enter the ship, McCoy is axed off by what looks to be a T-Rex, but it's actually not. McCoy. It's up to the remaining members to figure out what happened to the ship, find any survivors, and get the hell off. So yeah, this is what we ended up getting. Dinosaurs in space. Just saying those words makes me want to shudder. The whole thing reeks of B-movie madness. The best way I can sum up the plot is some loose mix of Jurassic Park meets Event Horizon. Sounds like a hot mess, and it is. Despite the story reeking of B-movie madness, the gameplay at least has to make up for it, right? Not so much. You'll move from room to room, search for key cards to unlock new rooms, acquire new weapons, and find files to uncover what exactly happened on board before you arrive. While on the surface, it doesn't seem much different from previous Dino Crisis games, there are quite a few things to help it stand out from said previous games. For starters, the game handles weapons differently compared to the past Dino Crisis games. Weapon amount has been reduced to only two guns with six ammo types one gun, and three ammo types per playable character. You also have small machines called wasps that have less ammo than your main guns, but do more damage and can be used to open some doors. You'll also use the systems to change the ship formation to access other parts of it. Yeah, this ship seems way bigger than it actually is. You'll primarily play as Patrick, but a few sections will have you play as Sonya. Both play similarly, and both suffer from the same gameplay problems because of this. The problems also happen to come from the other changes made. Because you are in space, you have a jetpack of sorts that will allow you to hover, zip around, and reach hard to reach places. You also have to do some platforming of sorts, and you'll use the jetpack to jump from platform to platform where needed. 
It's at this point calling the game survival horror is a bit of a stretch, and the last trace of it is the worst problem of the entire game that screws it all up. The camera. The camera still rears some of the dreaded tank controls like feeling of previous games in this lineage, yet it tries to add a bit of 3D flair to it. The problem is that the action is not designed for this type of gameplay. If we were in regular survival horror mode, that would make sense. Here that is not the case. Enemies are also more brutal than ever before, even on the easiest setting. You'll fight what feels like a load of them as they just keep spawning. You can use your jetpack to dodge them, but sometimes you may trigger a camera switch. Even that will throw your angle off. The game does auto-lock to enemies, but even then, the camera switching so much in this game can get too hectic to deal with. Combat becomes more frustrating than it needs to be. The platforming is also screwed by the camera. When you turn on platforms, sometimes you're not given the best angle to see where you need to go. You may over or undershoot the distance needed, and then you'll fall all the way down and have to do the platforming all over again. These two major flaws make the experience tedious. It makes the pacing drag on when you have to redo parts because the game sets you up to fail. It's not fun at all, and all of this could have been solved if they just gave the game a standard 3D camera. Boss battles tend to switch things up a bit from the standard enemies as you fight bigger dinosaurs. Actually, it's more dinosaur-like creatures that have dinosaur DNA. What was the ship doing with all that DNA out in space? Never explained. Still, it suffers from the same camera problems. Thankfully, you do get a breather. When you find a save room, you can save the game, download files for more information, and spend credits you earn on items like health packs and upgrades. You earn credits by killing enemies in the game. Successive kills earn more credits quicker by filling up a bar that you can unload on at save points. Even though this game plays like a mess, it looks alright. Models look fine for player characters and enemies, and environments do look good, though some progressive scan support could have really enhanced it further. Everything has a nice shiny look to it, and the look of the still captures some survival horror elements even though the game seems far from it. But even though it looks nice, most of the environments look too similar to each other at times. You'll get lost easily because of this, and even though you have a map and it tells you where to go, go to flashes of red, it's not always easy to read. Though it's not as much of a pain as Psy Girls was, so eh? Sound design is good. Weapons pack a decent punch, all the usual sci-fi sounds you'd expect are here, and the music at times does enhance what little survival horror elements are here. The voice acting itself, though, leaves a little something to be desired with more. With this type of campy material, you'd expect equally ridiculous voice acting, and with some lines you get that... Well, kind of. This is the type of crap that would be mocked on Mystery Science Theater 3000. Dino Crisis 3 is awful. The game may look and sound fine, but the gameplay is not. With not fun platforming enhanced by an awful camera, a terrible story that throws away the past story of the first two games, limited continues, and getting lost easily at times, I can't recommend this game, especially not at the prices it's currently at. You'd have to pay me to play it again. It's a shame things turned out the way they did, but they should have thought better about this. The franchise died after this, and it's not hard to see why. I really hope at some point Capcom revitalized Dino Crisis with a remake of the first two games and just go from there. Completely leave this piece of crap behind. I give Dino Crisis 3 a 1.5 out of 5. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, click the big red button below to subscribe. Check out the other links in the description for more cool stuff. And check out the playlist on screen for more content. See you in the next video.